initiate the valedictory session and set the mood for the course of the future. ಸಂಗಾನಾನಾಸತಿ ಸಮಂತ್ರಿ ಸಮಿ ಸಮನ ಮನ ಸಹ ಚಿತ್ತ ಸಮನ ಮಂತ್ರಮಂತ್ರ ಸಮಿಷಾಜುಹೋಮಿ ಸಮೀವ ಆಕೂತಿ ಸಮನ ಹೃದಯ ವಹ ಸಮನಮಸ್ತು ಓ ಮನೋ ಯಸ್ಸು ಸಹಾಸತಿ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾರ್ಪಣಮಸ್ತು ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿಡಿಟ್ರಿ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಶೋ ಯು ಅ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಕ್ಲಿಪ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಮ್ಯಾಚ್ಯೂರ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ but it has been done by a student of iit kharagpur uh, a student who is also worth mentioning mr navneet singh and he just graduated this year got a very good job in pune and he got an immediate absorption in some of the top corporate industrial networks of the world but despite all the business and the fascinations and the attractions he had time to actually make this little clip for the seminar on historical evolution of india he is a great boy and uh, he he thinks that what we are doing in iit kharagpur is a great job so kindly enjoy the movie and can we put off the lights sorry for this
second india the cultural the aesthetic the emotive india creative economy the shilpa of india which sustains the vast subcontinent for thousands of years
nation of the third and a much deeper India, a deep ecological India, or what we call the spiritual India. Working on the contemplative cognitive currents for thousands of years, of which Varanasi is just one. Step is older than history. Every movement is older even than legend. The history of spiritual India, as represented by the eternal legacy of our saints, sages, the rishis, the mantra drashtas. So this is a film which has been made by Navneet. And uh, before we forwarded this little film to us, he said, sir, I could not do a good job. But I told him that it's not a question of doing a good job or not doing a good job, but it's actually a question of participation. And despite his very busy schedule, he left with us this little clip in his last two busy days. So we are very thankful to him because this is the work of a young mind a walk of a aspiring your mind who thinks about india walks on india and tries to be a better indian in the days to come and there'll be hundreds and thousands and millions of navneets emerging in the future indian population so at this point we like to have a august gathering of some of the best minds that we had in this wonderful get together for the last two and a half days so to begin we'll We'll invite Swami Supananda Ji Maharaj on stage to kindly initiate the benediction. We like to have Professor Radharaman Chakravarti to kindly come here and join the benediction. We like to have Professor Shambhid Datta from Curtin University, uh, international visiting professor to IIT Kharagpur, and a man of Indic studies helping us, guiding us in various projects. We like to have Professor Priyadarshi Patnaik from IIT Kharagpur joining us. We like to have Sri Sraddhalu Ranadeji on stage. And it, it is not complete. Uh, kindly take your seats here. And it is not complete if we don't have the touch of the mother. So we call upon Dr. Durga Basu to join us. Yes. Swamiji will never like this. Yeah. And neither Sri Aurobindo will like this. Yeah. Yeah. Let the mother take the center of the whole thing because she controls everything she is the link between everything that is way here and way up there she is the destiny she is the process she is the beginning she is the objective and the goal she is everything it is she who is he in the words of Savitri Sri Aurobindo so at the outset it is our immense privilege and a great pleasure to call Swami Supranandaji Maharaj, who has been the great initiator of this movement and the inspiring soul behind everything that happened in the last two and a half days. Maharaj. Om Janani Sharadang Devi Ramakrishna Jagat Guru Padapatmitayo Svitva Pranamami Om 
the respected uh, <coughs> dignitaries on the dais and <coughs> the respected participants. So I have not been able uh, to be present in all the sessions, but from what I have gathered by seeing, by being present in the hall in some of these deliberations, I am definite that this seminar will make a positive headway towards shaping the minds of our people. It will be largely circulated in book forms and would reach out to each and every corner of India and abroad. So this is our duty and in the process we have uh, <coughs> discovered two young minds. One, I already said the other day, the blessed child of Swamiji, Joy, and the other, the blessed child of Sri Aurobindo, Sraddhalu. Sraddhalu has to, de has, has to do so many things uh, along the lines <coughs> initiated and partly developed by Sri Aurobindo. Uh, this I say because Sri Aurobindo tried to dig old some of the very difficult expressions in the Vedas. It is very difficult in the sense that the earlier commentators on the Vedas, they have given their own ideas, sometimes faulty, and there was some definite intention in their minds, which even Swami Vivekananda didn't accept. So these are to be explained. by fresh study of philology, as Joy was just telling a few minutes ago. And even after going through the printed materials, see Aurobindo found that there have been some ideas crept in which would have to be corrected, but he had no time. and he had to leave this world. But we, the ordinary minds, we do not have any capability to even point out to isolate those areas. Where even Aurobindo, Sri Aurobindo, felt that this would have to be corrected. And this is the task, immediate task before Sadhalu, I say, kindly pinpoint those areas. Because you have that mind set. You have been almost born and brought up in the very atmosphere where Sri Aurobindo lived and you imbibed. Imperceptibly, he, imperceptibly his blessings galore. This is my request to you. And I request the assembled scholars to read a few, <coughs> at least few of the articles by C. Aurobindo and you will better understand Indian culture. Samiji didn't have enough time to do that. He just pointed out here and there. But Sri Aurobindo had sufficient time. 
So this is our task to understand and to assimilate. And then you will be very much able to appreciate the Vedas, the Upanishads. Unfortunately, say from Sankaracharya, from Buddha, from say the Gita, even from Sami Vivekananda, we have been taught that it is the Upanishads that you have to study. Here and there, Sami Vivekananda says, yes, you have to study the Vedas. And he wanted to establish one Veda Vidyalaya, which has come up recently. Study, the study of Vedas is of paramount importance that we have to look into. And it is difficult to initiate that even. I said Sri Aurobindo got enough time to do that. He retired from the active life. But his mind was always engaged in rediscovering the India's past. I know it is his so writings <coughs> are all very difficult to read, but you have to master that art. You have to be very diligent, very sincere. Now about the, say, uh, seminar, historical evolutions of India, interior India. So I have developed one peculiar idea which I want to share with you. So here we have only two kinds of evolution at the material level and at the spirit level of spirit. Why I say material? Because even body, mind and intellect, they are all matters. Onatmo. Even mind and intellect are matter. And whatever evolutions we are all having are in, are at the material level. We are having the <coughs> history of matter, material history we are having. And its final goal, we do not know. But all these evolutions, all these evolutions are better be called involutions in a way because they are all trying to evolve. These are the these are the evolutions for the evolution of the involved state of divinity, spirit. So it is a portman toward involution, evolution of the involved state of divinity. And that's why see Onirban said that so behind the material history there is no, there is not a, a definite goal, but behind the spiritual evolution, there is always a definite goal. And I say, I think, which you all believe, <coughs> that the different goals at the material level, they are all subservient to the spiritual goal. The goal is to get to the absolute. And when Sudhadu yesterday was speaking about this motherhood, concept of motherhood, I appreciated very much in that. It's, it is very much in line with our age-old spiritual thought. Absolute, it is very difficult to define. Well, when that will, will of power, that power, how did that power to change in the absolute come, we do not know. But that has been 
the basis behind the projection of this universe. I won't say creation, it is projection of the universe. That absolute projected this universe through his power of will, Maya or Mother. Mother has thrown us at different levels. We are stationed at different levels according as our centers of our consciousness. We are all doing things consciously. When we are doing it, the level of science, we are called scientists. When at the medicine, we are the doctors. When at the level of music, this and that, we are all musicians. But we are all doing as human beings. In and through our discharge of this work, job or duty, <coughs> we are evolving ourselves as human beings. First as good human beings, then better, then best or efficient, Narottam, the best, and final flight is for the divine. And at single stage, we are living behind the crudities of life. So humanity is moving upward towards, and for that we are engaged in different acts. And we are to go back to the lap of mother. That is it. We are mothers. In a way, while well, you are saying that <coughs> waves, millions of waves may be there, but that they cannot destroy the ocean. Or rather, they are lost in the ocean. Probably, the next cycle they would be coming up. Like all human beings, we have when we have completed our journey in this particular period. we will be again born with everything that we, we had attained earlier. Nothing is lost. Amare tumi ases kore cho, amuni lila tabo, phurae phele avar bhore cho, jibono nabonobo. This stunts my question of soul. So it is not that all of us will have to pass through each of these evolutions. Not that that we will have to be all musicians, or all painters, or all doctors, all philosophers. I do not know the truth behind it. You may have, may not have. Maybe at particular station of our life, we have to pick up that sentiment, or those ideas, and live, and then leave this world, again to find out another suitable area where we would be born again with new vigor and new outlook till we get to the lap of mother. So that is the whole spectrum of evolution. And even through that we, of course, develop our living condition in this world. The Obudaya aspect, or the development aspect of our physical being is not overlooked. We create our own environment, make it more congenial, conducive for further development of ourselves alone. I think this is the message. It is more than that, the historical evolution of an integral India. I say, so evolutions for an integral evolution. These are all individual evolutions of human beings and human race. But the most important evolution we have to find out 
and there we take rest. So I am <coughs> definite that at the last stage we have to go through yoga. If you say that all evolutions will ultimately converge in yoga or meditation and ultimately that would pay would, that would pay for the OA to the absolute the divine state obviously that would make a large sense so it is not always good to talk we have to meditate we have to meditate you have done a lot I know you have all done a lot. We have to set aside at least an hour or two for sit, sitting in meditation after a day's work we will have to have sufficient time to have some scope for meditation, meditation and meditation alone. I feel proud to say to you that while I, I was listening to Mr. Sabdharu yesterday, this whole audience, <coughs> they were hushed into silence. And if there could have been any measure, any, any instrument to measure the calmness and quietude prevailing here. Such a beautiful speech, inspired speech. I personally say I didn't hear for long. I know how much you liked it. It is because that he led us all to that realm of intuition and meditation. That silence. Even, even talking could create so much of silence. We all experience. I was glued to that seat and the resonance of his ideas started ringing in my ear when I left this hall, even. So, dear brother, I salute you on behalf of everybody. I particularly thank Joy for giving us an opportunity to serve the purpose of the cause for which he has been chosen and to all who participated here this is my privilege to give you thanks I do so kindly prepare yourself for attending some such programs and thereby find inner joy and peace. Thank you. Thank you. It is extremely hard to add words after what Revert Swamiji Maharaj just said. I think we have moved into the lap of the Divine. We have moved into the lap of the Divine Mother. And the historical evolution of India is our own evolution to assimilate within ourselves that unbroken wholeness, the self, 
which is the self of the individual, the self of the universe, and also the self beyond. The three selves become all together. I still remember the day when Professor Radharaman Chakravarti, my respected sir, told me that he had a telephonic conversation with Sraddhaluji and uh, sir said he really felt very nice and uh, I just like to we like let us make it like a a movement of the Bhairavi you know which was being played as that little movie was going on Sindhu Bhairavi Sindhu Bhairavi the Bhairavi of the oceanic expanse the infinite waves the roads, the rises, and then the collapse into the lap of the mother, the infinite sea. And behind the sea, deep in the sea, is even a deeper calmness, which is He, the Absolute, the Shiva or the Brahman, which is the other side of the mother. So all that wonderful note came from Sraddhaluji. It was a Sindhu Bhairavi, you know, the rise and the collapse of the wave, wave function and again the re-rise and the collapse of the wave function as Swamiji says uh, probably in the last sutra of the Raj Yoga in Kaivalyapada the 33rd perhaps that she raises one of her sons to the summit of ascent offers him Kaivalya but in the reverse order she traces back and goes back to diversity to pick up other sons and other daughters. And from infinity to infinity, she has been doing that. From eternity to eternity, she has been doing that. So the Kaivalya that is offered to all the sons and daughters of the universe is an inverse of the sacrifice made by the mother. The Kaivalya that is offered to Sri Krishna on one of the bank of Yirva Yomuna is actually a sacrifice which is made by the mother on this side of Yamuna. Before I call Sir to say a few words, one day in Belurmat, Mahapurush Maharaj was moving and everybody was celebrating Janmashtami or Purushottama Vasudeva. Mahapurush Maharaj perhaps came close to a few brahmacharis and said, Tora Janish, Achke Shudu Vasude Purushottam Sri Krishna Janmudin Nay, Achke Mahero Janmudin, Maha Onnadike Janme Chilin. Tapar Kongshoke Jabalar Bule, Binda Chal Parbote Mudde Milie Gelen. Sheta Bule Jashna. These are the words of Mahapurush Maharaj. So this is, uh, I cannot quote it exactly, but Bhavatha, Muta Muti, Jatatukuni Maniache, Shaita Bolla. So with these wonderful recollection of the great words of Shibanandaji, Mahapurush Maharaj, I'd like to have a few words from Sir Professor Chakraborty. Because our journey at RMIC, Ram Krishna Mission Institute of Culture, from the little institute IIT Kharagpur has been mostly sustained by the love and the care and the blessing of one of few personalities which is Sir Professor Radharaman Chakraborty. This I know deep in my heart of hearts. The best of respect that I can ever command to everyone present without making any distinction. <clears throat> well, uh, I really am at a loss as to where I should begin. And the easiest thing for me will be to begin with the last item which was on the screen. At the emergence of India and I was just discussing 
a very significant line from one of our very evolved personalities in the field of creative literature in spite of being a very efficient administrator i am recalling that very first sentence of his song jedino sunilo jalodi hoite uthile janani bharat barsho uthilo bishe sheki kolorol sheki madibho sheki maharsho this is how you would like to it is not there but it is still there this is how we would like to figure conceive visualize our own india where else could we belong at all sometimes we talk about habitat habitat is a place where we get habituated to live but this is a place where you just don't live for a particular period of time but you have to belong there for ages where else can there be such a land which can attract so many people of whatever origin of whatever source with the sweetest of invitation that you can have to come here live here that has been my feeling throughout this seminar had it been an ordinary seminar i would have started with the expression sorry some would you please uh, put that off i'm sorry i'm sorry to leave it there that's the problem with mechan machines anyway uh, had it been an ordinary seminar i would have started with the sentence it has been a great learning experience that doesn't really describe that doesn't really express the feeling that i have at the moment it has been a great great illuminating experience a great elevating experience for me when i recall that memorable sentence of dil roys song jedin sunilo jalode hoite are we being pushed back to the holy past no we have been reminded of one very fundamental truth which joy i don't know in what relationship i have i i stand with him this is a relationship i just cannot define but he has used two very significant expressions because he is a scientist he can do that infinity and eternity if you use the the geometrical presentation of two axes as we usually do well that particular representation would be completely insufficient to have these two axes infinity and eternity ultimately the one of these you know axes would simply fall flat making it a linear line is linear formation endless at both ends it is in that kind of time scale that we have been put in the course of this deliberation it is true that we have been looking at india its evolution well uh, from the time very very past times down to many ages and up to the present times also when we are facing so much of disturbance when we really wonder what we are in what sense are we bharatiya this question unfortunately has come up but it has to it has to anyway that's not my point my point is that one of our very great historians radha kumar mukherji i refer to him he talked about india having gone through seven 
renaissance, not one. And many more renaissance would be coming. And that is the indication of this whole deliberation that we will be passing through many more periods of renaissance. And we will be renewing ourselves in that process. And that is, practically speaking, the ultimate fruit of spiritual creativity that started, well, way back in that past. That is why, perhaps, we have to say that there is, practically speaking, no time difference between the, the how do I express it, the genius, or rather the geniuses, who sculpted the image of the trio that's printed here. And Ramakinkar wage of today is continuity. The continuity that we can conceive of, the flow of music, another expression of eternity, from Amish Kusturi to Rabindranath, you can name anybody. Or even in the matter of quest for knowledge, why not link Atish Dipankar with Raja Ramon Rai? The same, you know, the same impetus is driving these people here. And it doesn't matter who came here to attack us. It doesn't really matter how much they have plundered. Because we are invested with so much of wealth, immeasurable wealth, that nobody can take much out of it. They are invited. We welcome them to come, take as much as you can. But if you really would like to know us, you would not like to leave this place. That is why some people still stayed on. We didn't really want the British to leave. If the British were really appreciative of this very high culture and civilization, they would have stayed on, on our terms. But because they didn't accept our terms, they had to leave. But even then we are still maintaining all sorts of links with the West. That is the modern period. Uh, now, the last point that really strikes me is it has got to be one India in myriad forms. But it doesn't mean that it has got to be a broken, you know, fragmented images just somehow assembled together. This is the viewpoint of today's well, so-called progressive intellectuals, that India looks like this, well, an assemblage of many fragmented, as though you have broken a mirror and now you have stoned them and trying to collect the pieces. That would not really bring back the mirror, the broken mirror. It's, it is not in that kind of a glass house that you are leaving. We have once again to ask ourselves, why, why have we forgotten the very Bharati Atta? That is our identity. I don't think I have much to add to what I have to say, but I have gained a lot, I have gained a lot. First of all, I have gained some light, great light, that I was looking for. I thought I would keep it secret. I just sent a small message to Pondicherry. After Sri Sardhaluji's lecture, I just left this place, went to my room, sent a small message, came back after an hour, and I told him in secret, Sir, I paid you the greatest homage I am capable of by leaving the hall after your speech was over. And he understood the point. I have gained another great asset. I didn't know that I was going to have a brother over there. Joy introduced him as his brother. I said, why can't you be my brother as well? If really I have such a brother, I will feel, I will feel extremely proud. And then I have also got a mother there. We usually call her Durgadi. That is the usual way of addressing a lady when you are together. But a Didi can also be a mother. And that is what we find in her. That is what we find in all of you mothers over there. The youngest one included. The youngest one included. She is also our mother. That is why there is this Devi Puja, the Kumari Puja.
and the other asset that I will be carrying home, I cannot express in my words. The great love and affection that has been given to me by this institution, the great institution. IIT where I have never been as yet, I have not seen IIT, sir. <laughs> like, like the great spirit Max Muller, who wanted to visit Varanasi, but he did not, or perhaps he would not. He feared that perhaps he would see a kind of Varanasi that would not tally with his image of Varanasi. But that is not my intention. I would very much like to come to your place, sir, IIT. That is all I have to say. My pronouns to everyone. So Professor Chakravarti took us to the waves of the hopes for the future. In the words of Sri Aurobindo, we don't belong to the past dawns, but we belong to the noons of tomorrow. The Muddhanna Shavitri Shudja, we belong to that. And it came out so well from Priyo's speech when he said, no one can say the last word in the words of Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore, Shesh na hijar, Shesh katha ke bolbe. So we like to hear a little more from Priyo, Professor Patnaik on this. Esteemed scholars and the monks of the Ram Krishna order, I believe that uh, I wasn't there on the first day because I was in IIT for another workshop. But the last two days uh, experience has been very meaningful. I wouldn't say wonderful that doesn't these days capture the sense because we use it very surfacially in, on every occasion. It has been very meaningful. I've learned a lot. And uh, my, my thanks to Joy again for giving me an opportunity to be in such a such an occasion in such a gathering. The only thing I would like to share is that uh, it has been a wonderful experience being with uh, an audience uh, which has been such an enlightening audience, an enlightened audience, and uh, people who have uh, listened to us and listen to the speakers with great deal of attention. And that is what is touching, the humility of uh, very intelligent, very sharp minds, people who have a lot more to share than they have been able to share, but the very, their very presence uh, makes the entire thing immensely more meaningful. So my, my respect and my thanks to the audience. Thank you. As Priyo just said, silence a thousand more, pa thousand more power powerful than the words that we are making right now. And just uh, perhaps a little less than an hour back, I was discussing with respected Baburaj Maharaj how we take this forward, the whole movement of the historical evolution of India because there are programs which are happening in this esteem institute where probably IIT Kharagpur as just one institute of many and with other institutes can come in from the back door and just stand next to the great movements that is happening in this institute and the larger Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement. A similar embrace with the movements that's happening in Sri Aurobindo Ashram, which, which Shupanandanji so rightfully said that an extension of the works of Swamiji completed by Sri Aurobindo needs to be understood both in breadth and depth. Is a requirement, is a prerequisite to the full decoding and application of the historical evolution of India. 
on the Vedas, hymns to the mystic fire, Shavitri, life divine, brain of India, synthesis of yoga, all life is yoga, the walks of the mother, the vision of Auroville as a spiral, the acceptance of Auroville as a charter by the United Nations, as an ideal urban habitat model, which Sir was talking about. So all these are so very important. But to just take this forward, the idea just came into me right now. There is a person who lives in Australia. He visits IIT Kharagpur and his house is just next door. So he can make a difference to start with. He's an extremely modern man, absolutely easy with all the latest softwares on digital image processing, its application in creating a Varanasi right here in this room through an immersion lab. At the same time, very ancient, very Indic, very dipped in values. So we like to hear a few words from Shumbit, another brother of ours, who was introduced to me by one of my co-patriot, Professor Bhargav Moitro, who is the principal investigator of another initiative, The Future of Cities. So I think Shombit's presence will make a big difference in the initiative that we are doing. I'd like just to hear a few words from Shombit. Thank you, Joy. Um, I don't know where to start because first of all, this is an audience that I'm not habitually used to addressing. And when Joy invited me to join the seminar, I happened to be here in Kolkata. And I said, sure, if it's at the Ramakrishna Mission Institute of Culture, I will learn something. So I came here to learn. And at the very first day, I heard uh, Shami Bhajanandaji talk about some very interesting concepts. The most interesting one really for me was the idea that India has many different layers. Not a very new concept, political. We discuss India mostly in terms of its political geography. You know, where the borders are, what is south, what is north. Perhaps we talk about the Ganges, you know, the Bengal plains, or we talk about the Himalayas. And I also discovered that when we speak about the cultural aspects of India, it's actually wider than those political boundaries. For example, in my own work, I study temples as an architect and the evolution of temple architecture. It goes from Afghanistan to Vietnam, right across Java, Cambodia, Thailand, Myanmar. And the more I study, the more temples I discovered. And this kind of cultural geography, if you will, is not restricted only to the space of, of temples. If you take music, you know, we have a far wider reach, cultural reach, than our political geography captures. And of course, you know, in terms of spirituality, it is even wider still. And Shami Bhajanadandaji talked about the very deep concepts. He talked about Einstein's equation, and he talked about the self and the other being connected. And this, it's so divine and vast that we continue to explore the spiritual aspects. So that was my first learning on the very first day. And I thought, in the afternoon, we talked about Project Varanasi. And Varanasi, of course, has a political uh, geography. It also has a cultural dimension and a very deep spiritual resonance with all of us across the world. And it was very interesting. I was sitting here and uh, anchoring the session, listening to the work that had been done in Varanasi. Uh, to see that, you know, we have to address issues of the pollution of the Ganga. It is a deeply troubling aspect that despite our spiritual, cultural, and political will, we are polluting and we are unable, we are able to understand the problem, but we are not able to find solutions. 
and to see the work done by Swasti ji and Amrita ji in ITBHU on simply providing environmental sanitation, looking at some very basic crude aspects of our existence through the use of the tools that we have in India currently, such as the institutes of technology, you know, the political will, we must address environmental degradation. And I think if Shamiji was with us today, he would be driving for climate, you know, looking after the environment. Because this is something that is not possible for us to even comprehend. It's a spiritual problem. How do we look after a planet? Uh, because it doesn't affect me today. It does not affect my day-to-day -day living. I receive oxygen. The sun is always shining. The river is giving us, you know, nature is very bountiful. But science tells us that the planet is in trouble. And we must be able, in Shami Bhajanandaji's words, find a way to connect the self with the other. And the planet must be part of that, not just simply us expanding out into the infinite, but the planet must sit somewhere. Otherwise, there'll be nothing to give back to the future. So Project Varanasi for me, even though I'm an architect, I'm very deeply interested in the ghats, the laneways, the havelis, the way they built, you know, the institutional structures. I'll come to that in a minute. I think for me the big lesson of Project Varanasi was the environmental aspect. We must find a way to solve that problem and if we can demonstrate that, uh, we must have the political will to address climate and the environment. And it's such a big problem, it's such a massive problem, the time scales are so large. And without science, we would not have known that. But now we need a spiritual reawakening, which helps us, particularly in a country like India and China, uh, to help us with the mission to address the problems of climate change. I think this is the lesson that I learned from Project Varanasi. Coming now to some other aspects of this discussion which I want to broaden. I don't know how much time I have. Right, two minutes. Okay, I want to talk about uh, two things, since I have two minutes, one minute each. The first is that this is the first time that I have experienced a collaboration between Ramakrishna Order, which is an order of monks in the Institute of Culture, and an Indian Institute of Technology. This is I have not seen it anywhere in the world where, you know, we can sit side by side and we can talk about deeply religious matters and spiritual matters as well as scientific matters. So I think this is a unique combination and we must find a way to build those bridges, uh, particularly in our education system. You know. uh, Priya talked about the IIT system and the Center for Happiness, you know, Shraddhalu comes from Pondicherry where there are, you know, these are experiments, Shantinikatan was an experiment. I myself studied in SEPT in Ahmedabad, which was also an experiment of that kind to try and break the barriers, <coughs> the rigidities of our education system. And so I think uh, if we can build those links and widen it to the education system, uh, we would already find some value from this con seminar itself. And actually it is already happening. Uh, recently I witnessed uh, a situation where meditation is being taught in schools in, in America and in Europe. And, you know, we need to find a way to incorporate some of these learnings, ancient wisdoms, into our existing systems right through the education system. The second thing that came to my mind is that uh, human capability. Amartya Shen introduced the concept of human capability, and I could never understand it. You know, so I was thinking about it, and it actually comes down to something very simple: that each one of you in this room who is here represents the elite of India. You actually represent the top one percent of India, because simply by being in this room, ninety-nine percent of our human resources are outside this room. They don't even know this room exists. You only have to go to the railway station in Howrah and you will see what is the human capability of India. So how do we take this elite knowledge, each one of you, 
you know, you have reached a certain level of capability and take it out to the 99% or maybe 90%. Let me be a little bit more generous. But there is a world out there which where capability is just non-existent, very basic capability. And it's not about reading and writing, but it's just human capability. And this is something that I think the partnership that Joy has set up, very unique partnership between IIT and the Ramakrishna Order, will help us. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I just heard Maharaj saying the distinction between the secular and the sacred. You know, that fuzzy line is slowly going away. And sometimes the Western word fuzzy, I'm just joking, is very close to the Bengali word paji. <laughs> and if you put a chandrabindu on top, then it becomes sacred again. But Thakur saying, paji te lekha ache shati nakkatra bishti hawe, to tumi jatoi paji edikodik kare, ak phota porbe na. To maki baire giye shai marar khuli khuje bar kurte hawe, shai shati nakkatra shandikkhan jan apekha kutte hawe. Tarpe dekhte hawe akta bang bero loke na. Aar tar pichon pichon akta shap ash loke na. Aar bhaggo jodhi shuprashun ho thakke tabi shai shapti amun chobal marbe, jay bang ti chitke beriye jabe. आ तो खून से शापिर बीच से मोड़ा खुलेर मुद्दे पड़ बे आ ताईनी ही नाचते नाचते आमादेर भावोंडोगे रबोशान हो गए ठाकुरेर की शुंदर गरुपो कोनो सेमिनार नहीं वही दुखिनेश्वरे एक टक खाटे बोशे ठाकुर शावचार बच्चे वेस सेमिनार को ले गए तार शामस विधान दो शम्तां दे नहीं हिस्टोरिकल इवोल्यूशन � Shambhitir Kathagulu we are just hearing and he touched upon and he grounded us on the, on the foundations of Indian culture. And long before James Cameron made his movie The Avatar and long before Al Gore made the movie The Inconvenient Truth and long even before the United Nations Environmental Program was formed in 1970s and long before the Club of Rome that was formed in 1966, and in long before also when Patrick Geddes made the statement on green politics, Shamiji walked into the, the rostrum of the Parliament of Religions, and in his second speech he said, religion is not the crying need of India. And he talked about food, shelter, health, and education, which we call today the Human Development Index. So Shamiji introduced the idea of HDI, the Human Development Index, to the whole world. So Shamiji, uh, through Shombit, he spoke for the environment. Bided environment, bitter environment, and integration of both. So at this point, I think everybody is waiting for that touch. And we like to have Sraddhaluji come here and say a few pre-concluding words before we have the last word. When I was invited for this conference, I was in doubt whether I could stay for three days or just come for the one day necessary. And my mother said to me, you are going to the land of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa to receive his blessings. Do not think about anything else. And so I came in that spirit and the words of Maharaji and the respected professors here of appreciation, I take in that spirit as the blessings of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahans. And I feel humbled and deeply grateful. In return, this morning when I spoke to my mother, I said to her, this is the most mature audience I have ever met. I meant spiritually mature. And I'm grateful and honored to be with you. In the deliberations of the last three days to 
resonate with the point you made. The one thing that stood out was the connection between spirit 